So yeah, Seb, so like, to begin with, basically, just, you know, as a former professional, as somebody who is now so focused on not just identifying talent, but also identifying the business of talent, right? And, and seeing how, you know, a player can look now, but what they can deliver. What is your overall vision when it comes to like, seeing talent and what are you looking for i guess when it comes when it comes to identifying talents from all over well first of all uh i think in this case it was helpful that i played in germany and in england uh, which was a very which were or well, are physical leagues and uh, by by the time uh, when you look at players uh, you try to envision how will they do how will they look in your own environment and is there a pathway maybe to europe if we if we're looking now from an MLS perspective, so from that point of view, of course, uh, when you look at players, yeah, we look uh, at a, a certain as a as a certain on a certain uh, possibility for a yeah for a further pathway, not just Chicago way. Also, is he able maybe one day to make it to Europe? Right, Slonina was a good example, of course. Jonhard Duran. So as you know, as I talked to you before, like this is about Jon Hader, and I talked to Pere already, and 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 we talked a lot about like the very beginning, right? The very beginning of him as a child and stuff. But just walk me through like how this all happened, because I, you know, obviously I've read stuff, but I'd love to hear from you. Just like you were in already in Medellin, is that right? How did the story begin? Look, in the end, uh, in the end, I I looked the uh, match uh, mainly to uh, to look for Carlos Terran. Mm -hmm. But uh, but then at a later point during the game, uh, a young boy got subbed in, uh, and uh, right away, when he came on, you could see, of course, his physical abil ability, uh, and then of course, yeah, he had two, two, three, one v ones uh, on on more on the wing. He came over the wing, uh, and you could see what he was able to do. Uh, his his uh, his jumping, his acceleration. Um, just the way he was covering the ball, the way he shot, and in the, look over the, over the couple of months later or the couple of weeks later on, you could see the more you watched about him, the more you could see what that pathway could look like, and uh, that it came that quickly. Nobody from us expected it that fast, to be honest. So you you were there specifically thinking about uh, other prospects, whatever, and this kid just like shocked you like it was like who is this look in the end if you it's often like that if you if you watch a game and uh and somebody stood stands out in that moment he caught he got my eye right away and uh you could see he is special so in that moment and that's why that's why uh, we try to get as soon as possible a hold of uh parents etc uh, etc et because he was a minor at the time, and, and uh, see how how everything uh, how everything uh, or how how fast we can progress. No, but from the again from the first perspective, you could see he's got talent, and uh, he has the ability to make his way. Yeah. So something that I was talking to Wilbert about is like, and something they focus on, and I feel like you share the same sentiment aside from developing the player or identifying the talent it's also identifying the human being like the kind of person that that they are you know and from what we've seen from a very little segments in in the premier league and from what i've seen when i report on mls is he looks like somebody who's way beyond his years in terms of maturity or confidence or whatever what, what, what did you see and what, what do you see uh from the chicago times Look, in the end, you could also see the way sometimes he scored goal. It looks so easy, but it takes a, a technical high, a high technical quality yeah, to score some goals, to to have some movements. And uh, John is outstanding in his football knowledge because he sees a lot of things already. That's more intuitive. Uh, of course, there is room to grow for him. Of course, he's a young player, but... Uh, he needs to take the right steps and I'm pretty sure if he's able to convert this and that's why I think now with Emery at, at Aston Villa, he's having a good opportunity to improve, to learn, uh, to grow, um, that he will that he will make his way. But everything is step by step. You have to earn it. And uh, But the good thing for John is he already has his, 
physical capacity, his technical ability, and uh, it's it's quite simple. We've I can give you a good example to this as well, please, because in, over the year uh, that he was um, in in uh, uh, when he wasn't when he stayed at Envigado, we tried to prepare him for the MLS. So we hired uh, coaches who looked after him, and you could see the testings that they did. It was always an improvement, and the way how fast he improved by training in a proper manner was incredible. So, and this is a bit the story that you can tell. Uh, he was able to adapt uh, quickly, and he tried to get better every day. And this is a credit to the boy, and he made his way out of it. Yeah, this is very, very interesting because Wilbur said a similar thing about how the way he consumes information and then translates it onto the pitch. It's one thing to do it, you know, with all due respect at Envigado and the Colombia, and then, but for MLS coaches to come in and trying to, again, progress that information, he consumes it uh, right in. Do you, let, let, I, I want to move a little bit, it's connected to Jon Hader, but it's more about your vision as well. How important do you see that market, that South American market in terms of the relationship between whether it's Colombia, Paraguay, Argentina, and MLS itself? I think it's a, it's a very, very important uh, market. It's, a, a, it's like a link market, uh, MLS. MLS can also, well, due to the fact that MLS invented the, the under 20 initiative rule, it was able, we were able to, to take uh, John on board. Otherwise it wouldn't have been possible. So from that perspective, that implementation of this rule was absolute key for us to move in that direction. Um, and the fact that MLS trying to improve, to make it happen, to bring in interesting young South American players into the league is a massive benefit. And this is why uh, that those leagues yeah, become more and more attractive. They are already attractive, especially for the top boys. But also for the younger boys, you are able to bring those players in and develop them. And then you see it now, a lot of players move from MLS also to Europe. Yep. And it's a pathway. It's a pathway. It's a nice stepping stone in between. The boys learn English. That's an opportunity yep. for them as well to start uh, to start with that. And then from that, uh, uh, from that platform, MLS platform, going to Europe, or staying in MLS and making their living their way in the MLS, it's a perfect example. You have various uh, opportunities. Yeah, I've always said that, you know, one of the biggest needs for MLS to be successful and continue to grow is to not just be, is to be a transactional league where you're not only purchasing, but you're also a market where Europe's coming in to purchase and your, your work is a perfect example. Uh, a slight angle from an Aston Villa perspective, how early did the likes of Johan Lang and his team come in when it came to you know identifying Jon Hader? Look, in the end, if you if you look at the whole the whole journey. the whole that journey, that's the right word. Because if you if you look at the the games that John played for us, mm -hmm. that was not long. No, I mean, wasn't. He, he was he was in Chicago for a year, but in the end, he played uh, within a couple of months, just mm. a couple of games, and in those games, he stood out and he made, in the end, his value. But he left a good, he left a massive impression. So we had a couple of clubs uh, uh, asking, and uh, Joe and Lange, they were they were also one of the of the guys who showed a, a real interest. So from that perspective. Uh, they got a fantastic player. Yeah. And they so you had you had some interest product. from clubs. Was it Premier League, just Europe, all over, basically, or, or was it all Look, over? Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to go into detail. Yeah, you don't have to tell me the names. Just uh, you know, if it's European, maybe the central market. Yes, of course, of course. Yeah. They, yeah. they they were a couple of clubs when uh, mentioned in the in the media. Uh, yeah, England as well, um, but. In the end, in the end, uh, Villa were the most aggressive. Being, being exactly being being in the end, uh, or trying to be on the fact uh, and trying to come in for the player for real, that's a different case. Are you uh, revisiting Colombia anytime soon? Are you uh, South America in general? Well, there, there's the the under seventeen uh, Copa Sudamericana upcoming. 
Mm -hmm. We'll have a we have a look there. But in general, we we've we've been uh, we covered under twenty uh, Sudamericana as well. So uh, we're always trying to be, yeah, open with walk with open eyes uh, through the markets and uh, even if, if it's uh, I don't know last time Guatemala, but you see a lot of a lot of MLS teams walking around. So it's it's quite common, and you have to be you have to be fast. You have to be aware of the talents. Even if uh, they're playing, they're playing in, in countries where you maybe not expecting the best boys. But to be honest, uh, this is an experience you will find everywhere. Good players. Yeah, you're always you're always looking. That's good. All right, final question, uh, Seb. I asked this of Wilbert. I'll, I'll ask you. What's the what's the ceiling for Jon Hader Durand? Do you think the ceiling? I can't tell you. Uh, because everything depends on John himself. If he's, if he's, uh, if he's, if he keeps his uh, his focus on the football and he works discipline, he keeps his discipline. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I don't see a ceiling for now. Um, it's it's no, it's always very hard. It's always very hard to give a, a, a projection uh, for for a player's pathway because there are a lot of things can come in, but. Uh, He's got so many tools in his locker, so uh, he should be able to reach a high ceiling. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.